How you doing everybody? This is Andrew with Decker's Pondscapes. We are here in Rotterdam, New York, and we're about to start this whole renovation. Right now what you guys are looking at is there's two ponds over here. What we're gonna do is completely tear them down, pull everything out, and then what we're gonna do is actually turn these two into one pond. We're gonna then start off all the way at the top. It's kind of hard to see from there, but all the way at the top, we're gonna redo the stream as well. But first what we have to do is we're gonna drain out the water. We'll take the fish out and put them in our holding tanks. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna get rid of all these plants, make sure the ones that we wanna keep are safe. Uh, the ones that are not, we're gonna get rid of. And then we're gonna kinda get digging. We're gonna get moving, put the liner in, rock it, and you'll see the rest of the progress in the end of the video. What do you got going on over here, Jason? All right, so we were disassembling these two ponds and we found a sprinkler line that's gonna run right through the center of where the new pond's gonna go. So what we're gonna do is cut the sprinkler line back here. We'll cut it back at the other end, reroute the sprinkler line around the pond now, rather than going through it. doing now is shelving out our pond. This particular pond is going to be three feet deep. So what we're going to do is two 18 inch shelves. So we've dug our first shelf here, 18 inches all the way around. And if you look, we've got blue spray paint painted out. And that part there, we're going to drop down to the three feet that we need. And the reason we shelf these ponds is to make them more structurally sound. So we've got our pond dug and shelled out. Jason's just walking around cleaning things up. He's getting all the loose roots and some rocks out of our way. Hey guys, so today is the start of day two and the first thing we're gonna do today is install this pond skimmer. So today what we have is a Signature Series 1000 pond skimmer that we are going to install. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a step-by-step -step process of how we install these. So first, before we even install anything, I took out all the tools that we're gonna need to uh, install this skimmer properly. So let's just go over a few of the tools so that way you guys can see. So first we have a silicone uh, caulk gun with some silicone that we're gonna need. You'll see when we uh, fit our bulk fittings in that we're gonna need that to make everything nice and snug. Next, we have our laser and our receiver over here. So that way we know our grade level and that way we know how deep we need to set this skimmer. So the next tool we have here is the channel locks and what these are used for is to tighten the bulk fittings. We're also gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver, an awl, a knife, and a two foot level to make sure that this pond skimmer is level all the way around. So here we have our skimmer pad, our bulk fittings, our overflow, and our male adapters to attach it. We've got our skimmer basket, our skimmer rack, our skimmer lid, and our skimmer faceplate. So we're getting our bulk fittings out. I'm going to install them. The only tool you'll need for these will be a big set of channel locks. So these bulk fittings are reverse thread. They come with a nut and two washers on them. There's a rubber washer and a plastic washer. The rubber washer will be on the inside. The plastic will be on the outside. 
Let me spin this around, I'll give you a look. So rubber on the inside, plastic on the outside. This is reverse threads. So we'll tighten it as tight as we can, hand tight. Then we'll go a half a turn with the channel locks. Next, we're gonna install our overflow elbow. So we'll put a little silicone on the threads so no water will leak out. We're gonna thread it into, on this particular application, it's gonna be the right side. And then our plumbing line to our skimmer is gonna go on the left side. This will be threaded in on the back side. Same thing, a little silicone on the threads. Thread into the back side of it. So right now Jason is checking the height of the skimmer with the laser. He wants to make sure that that overflow is at the right height so it's not draining the pond out. So Jason, how do you know what height to put your skimmer at? All right, so what you'll do is you'll find the grade of your pond, but you want to know what the grade is. And from that grade, we like to keep water level three inches down from the grade. So this way, you know, you're not going to have any leaks around the outside of the liner. So after I've got that water level, what I like to do is keep that water level about an inch below the skimmer plate opening. And this way it gives it the same level as your overflow. They're exactly the same height. And then I'll go through, get the ground dug to that height, check it in the front of the skimmer opening here, like an inch down. And then I'll go ahead and level up the whole skimmer. So once I got the skimmer level, I actually get inside of it. Um, some people may, you might, you don't have to. I like to do it because it keeps my weight inside the skimmer and I'm going to backfill the sides. This way it doesn't move when I'm backfilling it. All right, so what we did was backfilled around most of the skimmer. I left this open here. That's where our plumbing is going to come in. I want to have access to that. As soon as we start burying the line, we'll be able to glue it in and I can finish back filling it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and install our faceplate for our skimmer, which also has the skimmer door in here as well, which will be on the inside. So first thing you'll want to do is make sure the faceplate of the skimmer is nice and clean. It's brand new, it is nice and clean. So the next thing we're gonna do is install our skimmer face plate. First thing you'll want is the skimmer face plate that goes on the inside. In the bag of screws, there's like two guide screws that you'll want to unscrew in the top of this. And how you'll know what the top is, is on the bottom there's two screw holes, and on the top there's only one. So we'll install these in the corner. Just kind of holds this in place, so when you're screwing the face plate on, it's not moving around on you. So I'll line these up with the two top corner holes here, and it kind of holds it in place as you can see. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is put silicone on the skimmer where that face plate's gonna go. Don't be afraid to use a good amount, it can't hurt. And what we'll do is go right through the screw holes with it. Make sure you got plenty on there so it seals it well. So the next step's gonna be attaching the liner to the skimmer. What I like to do is to get a little slack on the bottom. Anybody knows that sets rock in the pond, sometimes that liner shifts a little. So I like to give it a little slack in case it pulls a little. It doesn't make that liner real tight up against the skimmer. So I will line this up. I'll poke one side through first and then the other. I will flip this up over the top. Make sure that that lines up really well and it's flat. You do not want any wrinkles in this. If you get wrinkles in it on that face plate, you're almost guaranteed to have a leak there. So make sure when we put our face plate on, we have that one hole up top, two on the bottom. We'll slide these over them guide hole or the guide pins. And next, we're gonna start one screw at a time. You'll poke the, the all through the hole. I like to start at the top in the center here. Just get that one in so when you're doing the rest that is not the face plate's not moving around now i put that in but i didn't tighten it all the way this way this face plate will move you'll have a little bit of movement in it in case some screw holes don't line up exactly going opposite side to sides so we went on top before we'll go on the bottom and just like the top we're not tightening them as we go we're just getting them a little snug That's how you install your Aquascape 1000 skimmer. So 
So we're gonna start today by finishing rocking the pond. Then we're gonna make our way all the way up to our stream. Obviously it's not dug out yet and we don't have our liner set up there yet, but we will get it there. We're gonna install our biofalls as well and get the rest of the plumbing run. So today we're gonna to show you how to install an Aquascape 2500 biofalls. Here's the biofalls. Here's all the components that go with it. The face plate, there's a rack on top. There's a rack that goes on the bottom and your filter pads. And the tools we'll need today to install this is channel locks and all a Phillips head screwdriver, silicone, a two foot level. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do is install the bulk fittings. So on the bulk fittings, these are reverse threads. It comes with two gaskets. One is a rubber gasket, one is a plastic gasket. The rubber gasket is always gonna go on the inside. Rubber gasket on the inside, plastic on the outside. And like I said before, this is a reverse thread. So we'll get it on there, get it snug, a half turn. Okay, so we've installed both of our bulk fittings. Now we're gonna install our male adapter for our plumbing. On this particular application, we are gonna be using the left side. So we've silicone on the threads of the two inch male adapter. Get it threaded in as far as we can by hand, and then we will tighten it with the channel locks. On the other side, we're not gonna be using it. If you were to be using this, you could install another male adapter and bring plumbing in the other side. On this application, we don't need it. So we're gonna plug the other side with a two inch plug. So we'll put silicone on the gaskets and tighten the plug up. Hey, so it is day four today. We don't really have too much left to do on this pond. We gotta finish that stream. We gotta get some ceiling done, get our lights all hooked up and all that fun stuff. So we will take you through what we're doing today. Should be a good day. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna finish rocking that stream up top. We will seal in our waterfalls. We're gonna get all the little nitty gritty stuff out of the way. And then we're gonna clean this pond out. We're gonna make it look beautiful, fill it up and see if we can get it running. So Bob, what's the reason you planted that aquatic plant right there? Well, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was to uh, sort of soften all this cobble we have on the edge. We've got a lot of rock here. So we used water plants to soften the rock and I didn't plant a really tall water plant here because I don't want to block the view of the uh, waterfall for the customer. So that's a wrap on this project in Rotterdam, New York. This is an 11 by 16 pond that's three feet deep with a waterfall and biological filter with a skimmer. The guys ran through the whole process with you. If you like this sort of thing, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, whatever you gotta do to get notified because we got more to come. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all soon.